three and a half years. That's all Tong Wah had to make history. But he wasn't even thinking about that when he arrived at USC. No, football wasn't even on his mind. Parties, ABGs, and late nights. That was the plan. But when you wear a Trojan jersey, your life isn't your own anymore. And Tong Wah was about to learn that the hard way. Coach Lincoln Riley saw it right away. Tong Wah did not care about the game. He didn't care about the grind. So Coach Riley made sure he knew where he stood. Blocking. That was Tong's role. No passes, no spotlight, just hit the field and do the dirty work. For Tong, it wasn't about the game yet. It was about surviving practice, counting down the hours until the next party. But it wasn't long before his choices off the field started to bleed into his life on it. He thought he could handle it, balancing the two lives football and the USC party scene. But when you're focused on the wrong things, it catches up to you eventually. He got caught cheating on a test, grades slipping to a 1.7 GPA, and for the first time, his family was not proud. But then came UCLA, USC's biggest rival. The game that could have made a name for him, but all Wah did was watch from the sidelines, stuck in the same blocking role. His body was there, but his heart was somewhere else. By now, he'd fallen to a single F and three Ds. Football was taken over, but not in the way he dreamed. He was becoming a body in pads, but not a playmaker. But then, something shifted. USC managed to make the playoffs as the 11th seed, and suddenly, Wa saw a spark. Maybe football was his way out. In the first playoff game, Tong Wa showed up. Five receptions, 120 yards, the best performance of his career. It felt like everything was finally falling into place. His body flew across the field, every catch adding to the belief that maybe just maybe he was more than the blocking assignments. But the game can take away everything just as quickly as it gives. A brutal chest injury ends the game for Wah. The season ended not with a victory, but with Tong Wah on the sidelines, watching USC fall short by six points. It was his best game, his biggest moment, but it wasn't enough. 16 catches, 252 yards, no touchdowns, 2.2 GPA in his first Year. He thought about walking away and entering the transfer portal like so many do when the lows seem unbearable, but Tong Wa didn't quit. He stayed. Stayed for the reps he finally earned late in the season. Stayed for the hope that Miller Moss's senior year might be different. Stayed because deep down, something had changed. He had three years left. Three more years to fulfill his dreams of winning a national championship. Some moments change everything. Tong Wah's second year at USC wasn't just about football. It was about life. The passing of his father, just before the season started, left a hole in his heart. His father was the one that raised him physically and was the one that got him into wushu. He became into athletics because of his father, and some would say he even plays football just for him. The chest injury from the playoff game still lingered as well, more severe than anyone realized. The national championship, it seems so far away now. He couldn't even step on the field. Four long weeks of watching his team without him, feeling helpless, while the dream of a championship felt like it was slipping away. Welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska, home of the Cornhuskers and home of But then week five, Tong Wah was back. The moment he stepped onto the field, he wasn't just playing for himself, he was playing for his father. The crowd roars as he scores a 69-yard touchdown. 69 yards, his first touchdown as a Trojan, his first moment of glory, and it was for his father. All of a sudden, the promise of a championship felt alive again. The performances started coming, one after another. Tong Wah was becoming a name, a player to watch. But just as quickly as things rose, they started to fall. Parties crept back into his life. Late nights, bad decisions. Tong was chasing something, but it wasn't the national championship. It was something emptier. His on-field performance started to slip. Practices became sloppy. The hunger was gone, replaced by a haze of late nights and regret. Coach Riley got word that Tong wasn't showing up to class, wasn't putting in the work anymore. And just like that, Tong Wah went from wide receiver two alongside Zachariah Branch to the bench. It wasn't just about football anymore. It was more about respect. But Tong Wah didn't see it that way. To him, 
being benched felt like something more. He started to wonder if his race, being Chinese, was holding him back. Did Coach Riley really believe in him? Did his teammates? But the season dragged on. USC missed the playoffs. Miller Moss declared for the draft, leaving a void in the team. Although USC won the bowl game, the glory just didn't feel the same. Tong Wah was slipping. The highs of his early season were gone, replaced by a party lifestyle and poor decisions. His grades fell, his parties went late into the night, and bubble tea became more of an addiction than just a drink. And then came the moment that changed everything. Coach Riley had had enough. The missed practices, the bad habits, the distractions. For Tong, it was more than a benching. It was exile. Coach Riley kicked him off of the football team. The dream of being a national championship, it felt dead. Gone. Tong Wah was no longer part of USC's future. Being Chinese already felt like he was playing from behind. And now, one of the best coaches in college football did not believe in him anymore. After two years of chasing football glory at USC, Tong Wah found himself at Notre Dame but not for football. His mother wanted him to focus on his future, and in her mind, football wasn't part of that picture. She convinced him to leave it all behind. No more late nights, no more distractions, just pure focus on his studies. And for nine long months, that's exactly what Tong Wah did. No football, no parties, no bubble tea, no ABGs, just textbooks and the library. Day after day, he studied harder than he ever had. And in the process, he did what most people thought was impossible. Tong Wah captured his aerospace engineering degree a year early. But for all the success, Tong Wah wasn't happy. Football had been in his life since high school. And now, without it, something was missing. No amount of academic achievement could fill that void. He had everything lined up. A job offer at SpaceX, 400000 a year right out of college, working alongside Elon Musk himself. But for Tong Wah, it didn't feel right. He still had one year of college eligibility left, and that one last thought kept eating away at him. What if? What if being a national champion was still possible? And then, out of the blue, came a call. Coach Luke Fickle from Wisconsin. He'd been following Tong Wah's journey, he knew the potential that was still there and even offered him one last shot a spot at Wisconsin with a chance to be the wide receiver four for the Badgers. Even though this was a low spot on the depth chart, it at least gave him the opportunity to chase the championship he had dreamed of since day one. Tong Wan knew this was his chance, but before he could make up his mind, another call came. It was Elon Musk. Musk called him a genius told him he could change the entire trajectory of SpaceX with the discovery he'd made. The future was bright, secure, $400,000 job right out of graduation, a career, a legacy in aerospace. It was everything his mother had ever wanted for him. Everything seemed perfect on paper, but deep down, it didn't feel like Tong Wah's future. It was football. His mother didn't understand. To her, the $400,000 job was security. It was success, but to Tong Wah, Football was the only thing that had ever made him feel truly alive. And for the first time in his life, he wasn't going to let anyone else make the decision for him. With one call, he made his choice. He chose football. He chose Wisconsin. One last year to chase the dream he had fought for for so long. One last chance to win a national championship. At that moment, Tong knew this wasn't just about football. It was about proving something to himself to his family, and to the world. He was back with one final year to make his mark, and this time, he wasn't going to let it slip away. By the time Tong Wah stepped onto the field for his senior year at Wisconsin, his life was unrecognizable. His mother had cut all contact, disowning him for choosing football over a $400,000 a year job at SpaceX. But for the first time in his life, Tong Wah had made a decision for himself. Ranked number six to start the season, Wisconsin had their eyes set on something bigger than just a winning season. And Tong Wah, he just wanted to contribute to a championship team. By week three, Tong Wah had earned the slot receiver spot versus Illinois. Tong Wah was back 
and instantly makes an impact with two touchdowns in his first breakout game of the season. The wide receiver one spot was his by week five and for the first time in his career, Tong Wa was the focal point of an offense. Game after game, Tong Wa kept showing up. He wasn't just a player anymore, he was an absolute force. And then came USC, the place where it all started, the place where he was kicked out. Tong Wa was not the same player who once walked those halls as a partier. He was back as a potential NFL draft pick. 11 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Tong Wa wasn't just proving Lincoln Riley wrong, he was proving everyone wrong. The ABGs from Alpha Delta Kappa could not believe their eyes. But most importantly, NFL scouts were starting to notice. They saw in Tong Wa a late blooming explosive wide receiver. They compared him to Tyreek Hill and Debo Samuel, a strong agile receiver with elite short route running and dangerous deep threat capabilities. And coach Luke Fickle, he taught Tong how to use his speed in ways Lincoln Riley never could. Welcome to another chapter in the long legacy the of Big the Big Ten Conference. Championship. This was the moment. With Wisconsin the battling their arch rival Nebraska, Tongwa made the play of his life. This one out toward the sideline. Touchdown, Wisconsin. A rainbow ball from QB Mabry Matower, a perfect connection that had been there ever since day one. Wisconsin managed to capture the Big Ten Championship and Tong Wa hoisted his first ever trophy. That was football related. He's got a lot of math competition trophies. But Wisconsin wasn't done. The Rose Bowl was here. Back in the Coliseum, the place where his college career began, Tong Wa exploded. Three catches, 148 yards, and two touchdowns. He led the Badgers to a Final Four appearance at the Cotton Bowl against Michigan State. Tong Wa was starting to become a household name in college football. Eight receptions, 183 yards, two touchdowns in the Cotton Bowl. Tong Wa feels like the most unstoppable player in college football right now, and his dream was finally within his sights. Wisconsin rolled into the national championship game as the number one team in the nation. Welcome everyone to a piece of college football history as we crown this season's national champion. There's been so much that's gone into getting here, twists and turns, and now it builds to this, the battle for supremacy. And these two teams have survived the expanded playoff grind. They have battled through a regular season, multiple playoff victories, all sorts of challenges and adversity, and they've arrived at this moment to battle for that precious trophy as we'll see the number seven seed in this playoff, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, taking on another squad from the Big Ten, the Wisconsin Badgers. And there, they were back. Back against Nebraska, the same team they had beaten for the Big Ten Championship. But this time, everything was on the line. Tong Wa came out hungry. In the first half alone, the Chinese man put up six catches 122 yards and a touchdown. All in one half. Tong Wa was unstoppable and Coach Fickle called for an explosive play to open the second half. Used the defense. This time the defensive line just came right in expecting the pass and blew up the play. He's got it right near the end zone. Touchdown, Badgers. And they go in front here in the second half. This guy has a knack for the end zone, doesn't he? His second touchdown of the game. He is up to 201 receiving yards. A career high in the biggest game of his life. The Badgers did it. They won the national championship for the first time since 1941. Tong Wa became the first Chinese wide receiver to hoist the national championship. Nine receptions, 211 yards, two touchdowns the MVP of the national championship game. He was the ultimate difference. Tong Wa's journey was never easy. 
from being a wannabe party kid to becoming a Wisconsin legend. The 5'9 Chinese wide receiver had come a long way. 88 receptions, 1,605 yards, 17 touchdowns in his senior year. He wasn't just another player, he was a difference maker. But as quickly as football had given him everything, it took something away. The SpaceX offer rescinded. And despite his incredible season, Tong Wa went undrafted. NFL teams did not believe in his size, and maybe they don't believe in him.